Oh, hi there, and welcome back to InsideTracks.co.uk. Um, uh, I did a video the other day on the basics of scalping, and uh, I got a request in from a couple of people uh, who said, could I do a similar approach um, to the basics of back to laying, um, both of which are very popular um, strategies for trading Betfair. So um, t this video is going to be quite short, I'm trying to keep it to the basics. Um, I've done a few videos on back to lays before. Um, and so you can go into some other videos to get more details um, if you need them. But this is meant to be for the beginner. Um, and it's meant to be for those people who want to just brush up on uh, their back to lay and the way they go about it. Just checking up whether they're you know, in line with what, I, what I'm thinking. And maybe I'll give you a few clues and ideas as to how to move forward. At the end, I'm just going to give you a, a tiny add on, on what I do. So uh, be, be prepared for that um, towards the end. So let's just get straight into um, back to lays and, and, and trading Betfair using that, that methodology. Um, and and the, the common thing that you have between all these different um, uh, exchanges that I've got here, stock exchange, Forex, Bitcoins, commodities, oil, gas, et cetera, and Betfair, um, they all have one thing basically in common and that is that betfair um has brought to horse racing the ability to not only back a horse but to lay it so um in all the exchanges you make your money from the difference between um a back and a lay or a buy and a sell um that's where you make your money so if you can buy it cheap and sell it um expensive then you make money if you can back it high and and lay it low you also make money on Betfair. So that's the basic, basic principle that we're talking about in terms of what we're trying to achieve here. Now, um, what is in effect the back to lay you do, do on horses? Well, the first thing is, of course, the back bit. So we're going to go to a horse and we're going to see that its price is, is here 12. Um, so here we go. Uh, the Betfair starting price is 12. So we're going to put a stake on it of £10 and our return... It's basically 12 is 11 to 1. Uh, and the reason you get a return of 120 is because you get your stake back. So basically, that's your that's your, your back bet. You put that on. The next thing you're going to do is, is basically let it go in play. And um, you, you work out what money you want to make on, on the lay bet if it's going to be matched. So uh, I recommend very strongly, and I'll show you why later on, um, that I look for a 50% return. So 50% return being, if that's £10 here, I want to make a profit of £5, okay? So my lay bet has to match the return, has to be, give me an equal um, liability uh, as I have in terms of the um, uh, back bet. So at eight, I can uh, lay £15 at eight, um, match the, uh, the the amount of money I would get back from my 12 at 10, and I will get a profit no matter what the outcome of five pounds um, as a result of this particular bet. Now, again, I've got a back to lay uh, staking calculator where you can put in the, um, and I'll show you at the end, but basically put in the amount, uh, the odds that you're going to back at, the amount you're going to back it at, and, and what profit you want to make, and it will tell you what... Uh, lay odds you need to put it at and, and what, what um, amount you need to, to lay. So you can make money by finding a horse at 12 and backing it and laying that horse um, generally in play, but but quite often actually it can happen that you back it at 12 and, and over the period of time before the race goes off, it actually hits eight and you, you can make your money even before it goes in play. But generally speaking, um, the horse has to go in play because there's generally a reason why it will um trade lower and that's the principle you, you you're looking at with back to lay there's there's going to be a reason um so you need to have a, a way of finding horses that um and i've said how do you find candidates for back to lays well the candidates have to um have a reason why they're going to trade lower why is this this, this particular selection going to trade lower well, um, I'll tell you a little bit about why um, and give you some examples in just a second. But um, the main thing you're looking for with a back to lay candidate and how to pick them is that you must be able to replicate um, the way in which you choose um, candidates. So it must be that the method you use 
must be easily re 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 replicated. It's got to be profitable. So you've got to prove that it's profitable and it's got to have some degree of proprietary um, nature. So it's got to be something that is not generally used by most people so that, um, that, that you don't have an edge. The proprietary nature of, of, of how you choose candidates um, is, is your edge in the marketplace. So you need to have an edge in order to make money because you're up against other um, uh, Betfair traders. Uh, you're not up against the bookies. You're up against fellow Betfair traders. Um, and if they know more than you, they'll be. Okay. So that's that's a firm thing. So whatever you choose, you know, you might say, okay, let's let's just take a, a, a silly example. But you might just say, well, I'm going to back to lay every single horse that's got that's, 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 that's at the top of the race card. So it's got a one. Okay. So the whatever whatever um, race I'm going to do, I'm going to back to lay the horse with number one on it. Now that's that's totally uh, re replicable. So you can re you can repeat it. You, you can do it every single time. It's not a problem. Um, you would have to then collect your results. And if it showed that actually by doing that, and there's possibly a reason, I could probably give you a reason, the, the, the horse at the top of a handicap, for instance, um, often is the best horse because it's the one carrying the most weight. It's the one uh, often that is has a, a, a rating as the highest. So it's quite possible that actually doing that could be profitable. I, I don't know. I haven't tried it. But, okay, so let's just say it is profitable. Um and actually, probably nobody else has thought about about um, back to laying every single horse with a one on it. So, so it, it probably is proprietary as well. So you wait, you know, there you are. I just found a method um, that that could be proprietary, is rep, 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 replaced, rep, replicable, and um, uh, I don't though think necessarily it would be profitable because I can't really see too many reasons why it would be. So that's that's the principle though. So. You could do your own process, but uh, I'm going to give you uh, two examples of what I do um, and how do I find uh, candidates for back to lay. So th the first example is based on statistics. So what is the process I go through? Well, the criteria are the selections must have traded at 50 percent of its Betfair starting price um, in play uh, at least 80 percent of its runs with a minimum of five runs. So therefore, what I'm saying is, if of course, uh, if this selection I'm going to go for has over its previous five runs, four times hit 50% of its BSP. So if its BSP is eight, it's hit below four, then um, it's up into the long list. And from the long list, I would generate that that, that generates. Um, you now need to say, okay, let's ensure that today's race that's going to go in today is similar to those historical races, is it, is it a similar class? Is it, is it the same going? Is it it's a similar course? Is it? Um, uh, and you've got to just make sure that actually we're not taking a horse from a very you know, poor race and they've now been placed into a uh, um, you know a group race and and, uh, and and it's got absolutely no chance because it's being it's totally out of its depth and uh, it's got no chance of of therefore trading trading lower. Uh, and then once you've got you know everything down to to a short list. Um, look at that uh, with, with some uh, degree of analysis. I generally do that for myself. So I'll look at the short list and I'll have a deep dive into each one of those selections and whether I think um, they have a good chance based on my knowledge of, of racing. And then I allocate uh, a star rating uh, between one and five stars, which shows um, how confident I am that this horse is liable to trade lower and that also then informs your staking so if it's one one star that could be a pound if it's five stars that could be five pounds you know uh, so on so that's that's the first first example so based on statistics I'm finding horses that regularly in fact more often than not trade at 50 percent of its BSP 50 percent of its BSP would give you a, a what's called a dob a double or bust but what I then do is something different. But basically, I'm st that, that's how I'm choosing my candidates. That's how I'm getting them down to a short list. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about finding the results of that in a minute. Example two is based on pace and draw biases. It's, it's well known that there are courses that 
um, support uh, front runners and um, there's a pace bias that says, yes, the front runners, once they're out in front, um, uh, they're difficult to catch. And you'll you'll find sometimes when you're watching uh, horse racing, say not many behind got into this. Well, because the, the course is supporting the front running horse. Now, uh, let me give you an example. Uh, Pontifract, uh, if you aren't in the first three going round the bend, coming out the bend at Pontifract, you've got very little chance um, of making up ground going up the hill to the, to the line. Um, I, I'll tell you why that is. If you can imagine that you are going down a hill um, with a, you know, with 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 cars behind you, and you uh, go and, and they can't get past you, they don't want to get past you because you're going down this hill. So you're going down the hill and they're, they're slowing down behind you. But you, just as you get to the bottom of the hill and you're about to go up the other side, you ram the accelerator down, but they're still braking behind you. Then you're going to have an advantage, aren't you, going up that hill because it's very difficult. When you, you've got away. You're, you're accelerating up that hill. They're still braking. And suddenly they've got to now accelerate up and try and over, overtake you. It's very, very difficult. So that's how Pontifract is in just general terms. And I, I'm trying to give you an imagination as to why Pontifrac supports front runners. Chelmsford supports front runners. There's a lot of uh, um, tracks where I can show you. Yep, definitely. If you're out in front, you're very difficult to catch, and therefore um, you're you know it's, it supports your, your horse if it, if it is a front runner and you can get out in front. So there's a pace bias there, and there's also draw draw biases. Chester five furlongs. If you're not drawn in one, two, or three, you you've basically got no chance. So the draw bias, uh, because it's a very tight round course, it's like saying to someone who's doing the 800 metres, um, we're not going to give you a head start. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to all start on the, on the, on the line, or 200 metres. Yeah, 200 metres uh, uh, is probably a better example, where you get going around a track, uh, athletes who are in the outside lane get an advantage, don't they? They start off, you know, whatever it is, 10, 15 metres in front of the person um, uh, who's in the inside lane. Well, not at Chest, not at Chester, because they have the stalls and they all start the same line. But it's it's exactly like that. It's like saying to a 200, 200 meter ride runner, um, if you're drawn wide um, in the outside lane, you don't get any advantage. Well, that's daft, and it obviously gives the people in the inside um, a, an advantage. So, what you're talking about is is trying to find this this advantage, and the criteria I use is also that um, you know I want to have horses which are running in races where the handicapper has some time to look at the form and say yep um this is how i'm going to handicap them so that what the handicapper wants is for all the horses in the race to finish in a line that, that would be his dream sweat dream he, he, he wants to see 10 horses crossing the line literally you know dead heating that's that's his that's his dream um so when you've got four-year-olds and 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 uh, or, or above and they're in handicaps they've got enough um, form there for the handicapper to to be saying yep i'm trying to make sure that these these guys are are, are equal um, when they go into this race so therefore if they're all equal going into the race if you can identify a draw bias or a pace bias which gives your horse the advantage and of course there you go. That, that's that's why it wins. Well, that's why it's going to trade lower. It's because it's got this advantage where the handicapper has said, "No, no, no. I, I, I'm, I'm, I've rated all these guys that they all finish finish equal." So that's that's why I would use that uh, example as a way in which you can choose candidates for back to lay. But under any system that you use, um, mine or or, or or your own, um, a trade becomes a no trade if a horse drifts badly. Um, there's nothing worse than having uh, a horse that was, you know, in the morning papers or in the morning uh, when, you're, when you're looking on Betfair is, is, is 4.0. And when it comes to the race, it's 8.0. And you clearly um, have a, you know, a distinct impression that, that nobody wants to back it. And, and actually, uh, generally speaking, horses that drift that badly, um, oh, there is you know, something that's not quite right that you don't know about, but somebody does. So a more than a 33% drift um, is where you you, do, you say, no, I'm not, I'm not going to bother with this trade. Okay, so we've worked out what, what a back to lay is, and we've worked out 
two two examples of of how you could choose your horses, but but you could choose them any way you want. But let me just go into a little bit more about um, you know whatever strategy you, you you use, keep your records, keep your records. I keep a detailed monthly report of everything I I choose. Um, I have the the date and the track and the and the BSP and the inplay inplay low. Um, this 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 particular one is double or bust. Um, what happened if I do a double or bust? What happens with the with 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 a fifty percent uh, return on investment and where's the profit? So I, I keep a detailed monthly report on that, and then I have an overview of from April two thousand and twenty two. It's quite a long time now, two two years um, uh, of what happened uh, to those particular uh, horses that I've chosen month by month. So 41 selections were there, 52 there, 67 there during the month. Uh, what did they deliver in terms of a profit? Profit, And um, you can clearly see that um, dobbing, double or bust, is clearly unprofitable. Minus 107 over the period. 50% ROI under what, what I call the old or original process is clearly profitable, 164.5 since in, in, over the two years, and a 14% return on investment. But I've improved um, what I do um, because I, I see by keeping records, I can see what's going on, and I can say, well, let's improve it. So I've improved and I've put in a new process that now has nearly, well, more than doubled the return on investment and is basically giving me a similar similar profitability over a much shorter time, a, a year rather than two years. So uh, almost double the profitability of, of the system by keeping a record and understanding what's going on and improving what I do. Talked about the uh, back to lay staking calculator. You can get this off the website. Um, it's free, uh, so you don't have to do anything. Just go, go to insidetracks.co.uk bottom of the available on the home page of the website um, and all you need to do is input your required return on investment i use 50 percent, but you could use anything you like i certainly wouldn't use figures higher than 50 percent, but I, I suppose you could go for 66 percent if you wanted to or but i i absolutely definitely do not recommend uh, a dobbing strategy some people will tell you dobbing's great but uh, my experience is it, it just simply is too volatile and isn't a long-term uh, a, a profitable method. So you say what your return on investment is, you say what your stakes stakes are, and you put and you put in your backing odds, and then the spreadsheet will tell you how much you need to lay, um, your lay bet should be, and at what odds to place it. So so, so it's very simple. It just churns it out for you, and 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 then you, you if you do do what the, the the calculator says, it will give you a, a profit. Um, if it matches um, for whatever the result. So th that's that's free for you. Um, I do a newsletter. This is the slightly the, the advert. Um, you can sign up for the members' newsletters. Uh, you get the Back to Lay new newsletter, which is the, the one with the statistical um, uh, example you saw back there, and, and those results you see are come from that newsletter. Um, I also do another newsletter, which is Hints and Tips, which is more about trading Betfair and, and what I see as the naps and um, uh, long shots and so on for the day, uh, also uh, profitable. Um, you can get a 14-day free trial. Um, you know, you, you try before you buy. If you don't like it, on the 13th day, cancel and you don't pay me anything. Um, so you can cancel any time, 13th, 14th day, pay nothing. Um, if you do go into then paying... Um, uh, for it, which is only uh, $9.99 a month, uh, you can still cancel off the first month because there's no contract. Okay, So that's it, really. Back to lay. Um, back to lay is a, a very simple process. Um, it's very, uh, you can have a, a way in which you can find a method that if you then uh, say, yep, I can replicate that. Uh, yes, I've, I've measured it and I find it's profitable. Um, and yes, not everybody can can do it because they're they're they they you know it's, it's not it's not uh, simply out there. Um, then uh, you can have a way of making some money. Um, and as you saw from the results, uh, some some okay okay uh, uh, results from from what I've done. Uh, yes, you have to take the ups and downs. Um, some months are, are better than others, 
but generally speaking, uh, you can make okay money out of back to laying um, as one of your strategies in, in trading Betfair. Um, I hope this has been okay. Um, I hope you've learned something. Uh, there are other videos, so uh, look out for them. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Like us uh, and subscribe, and you'll be alerted to all the new videos I do. Best of luck, and uh, thanks very much indeed uh, for um, uh, listening to me. And uh, I wish you all the very best.